Hello everyone, welcome to Flash XML Interactive Content Development. I am your instructor, Zachary Crockett. We are going to learn today how to use Flash XML applications to control media within web pages, basically. And you can use this in your own materials for your own classes and I will show you how to do this. There are lots of ready-made things out there for you to use and there are simply some basic skills that you need. You read in the pre-lecture materials about separation of concerns. Another word for that is modular design, just separating out the pieces so that one, the problem becomes easier for you to tackle as you build it, um, but also that at, to maintain it in the future. Um, as the, as the materials change, it's much, much easier if, if everything is separated out. We're going to be using Flash for our uh, functionality and XML for our content. And there are all kinds of good reasons for those. But let's just get started. So here in my movie, I'm going to be using these files in this folder. Um, in your computers, during the hands-on activity in class, they will be in the temp save of your lab computer, but you will have these same files. So we are going to start by looking at a certain uh, media player. It has the ability to play all kinds of different files and you can customize it to look just how you want. Let's take a quick look at some examples. I linked to this from the Moodle site, but um, let's take a look at it now. I'll just walk you through it. Um, the, these are four different examples of the JW Media Player and we will go take a look at where you can download that in a second but these are all the same player and these are all different ways that you can customize it so to show you some of the different media files it can play it can play mp3s and you can include an, an image that you want to show while you play the mp3 I don't know how well you can hear that but uh, the microphone's probably picking it up a little. You can change the volume, you can mute it, you can skip around, you can pause. All right, another thing it can do is play flash video files. Um, so any video that you create, you shoot with a camcorder, you can convert to flash video using some plenty of, of tools out there that are cheap or free, and we have many of them here in the Dev Studio. So. Here's a little flash video, pretty neat. Um, it, this, in this particular example, we also have included this button for showing the movie in full screen mode. That's pretty neat. We can still mute it and change the volume. Um, and when it finishes the movie, it stops, goes back to the preview image. We can also work with a whole bunch of different media files and include them in a playlist so that one media player will will play them all and the student or whoever is listening or watching can skip around. So here we have an audio file. Again, we can do it full screen. There's nothing interesting to see there, but we can click around in the playlist. It's an, uh, an audio file. This is our flash video again. This is uh, simply an image, but we put a little bit of uh, title around it. And then we also have this uh, s flash animation, this Swift movie that someone created. The door opens, our guy comes in, he's smiling about something, his dog Zappy is here at the end. And we can also use these navigation things to skip around in our playlist. Um, and we can, as before, view that in full screen. Let's see. Lastly, and this is probably going to be the most common use that you actually have in your own materials, is just a simple little little line that doesn't take up much space on the screen. Um, this actually plays a, a little piece of mine. You can download this on my website, and I've included it in your materials. It's just thrown together but we've also turned on a repeat function. So if we skip all the way to the end and let it play, it jumps back to the beginning automatically. We've also told the player to include a download button. So if you click here, it will download an MP3. Um, and we've turned off the digits that you can see 
here. Um, so let's just see really quick where you can uh, where you can download this. If you just do a Google search for JW Media Player, it's the first thing that comes up. Here is a page on uh, this guy's website. He created it. Um, it's built using Flash. Um, so it's very cross-platform, people on PCs, people on Macs, people using Linux boxes. Everybody can use this, um, and it can play single media files or um, playlists, as we saw, RSS, SPIF, or Atom playlists. These are the different kinds of media that it can handle. Um, and there are all kinds of ways that you can use it. It's very easy. It's released under a Creative Commons license. If you don't know anything about Creative Commons, that basically means it's free for you to use. It, um, you can use it and modify it um, for non-commercial purposes. If you want to do anything where you, make, where you make money from it, he wants 15 euros, which is a small price to pay if you're actually going to make money from it. But of course, most of us are just going to use it for educational materials where uh, there's no income associated with it. So you can click here, download it. Um, it is totally free. And if you happen to recognize any of these words, if you have a blog that um, uses WordPress, for instance, then these links will help you include the player in um, those other kinds of setups. And he gives you all kinds of um, support places to look for it. So. That's all great. I'm going to walk you through some of the most basic uses of it.